it's uh, Marcelo and Michael and, and Sam. We're going to have a look at some local support stuff. Um, yeah, I was just going to ask you one question I want to ask you, Marcelo, is what are, what are you working in any particular software day to day? Like, what, what, if you are, what languages are you using at the moment, mainly? Um, no, uh, I, I'm basically doing work with Windows. Oh, okay. Um, so you uh, are you using VB or .NET or something? Uh, no, my day to day does not involve uh, code. Right. That's, 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 that's a shame. That's a shame. Yeah. It, it's. I. I uh, yeah. I, no. I, I want to do more coding. I mean, I'm. I'm. I'm like. I'm on half days at the moment. I'm like half day on admin and half day on coding. And I wish I could do full day on coding. No, mine is is uh, basically admin all the way with. Yeah. Uh, Windows and uh, I work in biotech right now. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, just I need to pay bills. Well, we, we indeed we we will do. Um, but yes, so let's. I, I just pulled out the latest stuff. Um, yeah. So the, the 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 thing that we've been looking at, you know, we've been having the comments. We're having a good conversation in the um, uh, pull requests. Is about refactoring this this code that we've got in local support related to uh, cookie management, isn't it? That's what we've been focused on, and um, so now, d do you have like some outstanding questions in your mind that we should just clear up before we try and make further head or tail of it? Um, well, like I said to you in in Slack, uh, mm. there are way too many moving parts and sometimes it's a little bit over my head. Sure. And, uh, but, you know, I, I'm willing to take the plunge and, you know, just try to do what I can and what I cannot do, just simply ask. <laughs> right, right. Indeed. Indeed. So that's, that's for me, is the best, uh, the, the best way to get it to stay involved with the coding and and yeah. you know it's it's just um, totally yeah that that's basically uh, it's just too many moving parts sometimes and it's overwhelming and it just you know like you, you always say well if you if you spend more than three minutes you need to ask for for help mm, if you're stuck right 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 you know? and uh, and sometimes I spend like an hour yeah. Before I ask for help, but anyway, right. we started with the. Mm, go on. We started with a case statement, right? Yes, we did. Yes, we did. And then yeah. we kind of move on to the procs, and then uh, with your suggestion to look at the at the gem. Right. Uh, I started looking at the gem, mm. and. With the gym, I was asking uh, Maureen as, uh, for help mm -hmm. just to be able to um, look at the gym and try to implement it into our code base. Sure. And that happens to me a lot with the gyms, mm -hmm. that I see a gem that needs to be added to our code base, right. and I'm kind of at a loss. Sure. Oh, totally, totally. Uh, so, you know, those little things would be really useful if, if, you know, I get some guidance in there. Sure. And uh, because the, the, there are things that can be uh, sorted out fairly quickly. Mm. With somebody like you who, who is a good mentor, I mean, that should not be that much of a problem. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Yeah, just going back to your earlier point about the you know getting stuck for. I mean, twenty minutes is my rule for like if you're if you're kind of, and it's all because of the type of stuck. Like sometimes you're stuck and you're you seem to be making progress and you're changing the error message or, but it's uh, but yes. Um, so yeah, I, I was just cleaning up my branch there. I've I've pulled out your branch uh, and and Marwen has has pushed a couple of things uh, there. I've just rolled it back to where uh, where we were you, the last code that you checked in. Uh, right before the before this, and I think uh, if we go, am I looking at the right? I'm looking at local support here. Uh, finding path. Um, it's all about cookies, isn't it? Um, so we've got this. 
you got something there. The, yeah, so, so this is the thing. Sam, we can you uh, raise, let me raise the volume a little bit. Sure. Uh, I can, you can raise the volume. I can also, ah. Uh, ah. Increase my level. Uh, Hey there. I'm back, I'm back. Yeah, and I've increased my mic volume. Uh, can you hear, is it good now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so this this was the, um, I mean, the interesting thing, so, so yeah, so this is the, that was it, well, as it was in the original state. I'm kind of, I'm slightly Correct. surprised. I'm quite surprised to see, oh, okay, so maybe is this this is on a show me the cookies spike for that the gem rather than the refactoring. Yeah, and so we uh, had... That is, that is correct. Uh, the um, the name of the branch was uh, refactor case statement, something like that, okay. and it had the pivotal tracker number first. Yes, yes. So I, I think that's... I, I was sort of half expecting to see that, but we've got two... Yeah, we've got two pull requests, haven't we? So, so one of which... Is, is that the correct way to name the... Uh, yeah. That, that's the way we're going for in, in local support um, as described specifically in our contributing okay. MD document, which is that we, we, we do this. Um, I, I yeah. find this to be helpful because it basically means that when we're sorting the branches, we know if two branches are working or related to the particular thing. Um, right. So, uh, yeah, so... It, and it's then... It's also... Yeah. Anyway, not not everybody loves that. Um, it's uh, but yeah, definitely it's the way we're going for it. And yeah, so you. I do, I do, because it just shows you the pivotal tracker number. Right. Right. Right there. Exactly. Yeah. And so we can see. Yeah, we've got the other two. So I mean, the refactoring thing. I mean, I think we had, we addressed all of that, and I think you understand why the case statement is not ideal. It's kind of closed for uh, extension. Um, we 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 managed a. Uh, Sort of refactoring of it, and and that sort of done. But then there was a question in your mind of like, you know, what to do with the gem. And so I guess uh, here, I can let me, just... let me let me stop you right there because oh. I was coming, I was working on the refactoring via the modules uh, and the procs, and then you said, well, uh, let's let's work on the gem. So I kind of put that aside and 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 started working on the gem. And and, and I agree with you that. If we can implement the gem, that would be great. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just looking here. So, so you, the, this is a set of the changes that you had made, trying to get the gem in there, and and, and you're saying you were sort of struggling uh, with with that. And then Marilyn has made some, and he's kind of like, you know, done the next couple of steps. Are are you comfortable with what he's done? Did what he do with, is what he's done made sense to you? Uh, well, not quite. Yeah. But then again, you know, my implementation of the gem was also kind of messed up because I was just, you know, I said, well, how mm. is this going to work? So maybe we should talk about the gem and what sure. it does. Yeah, let's do that. Um, and make him, maybe make some notes quickly. Sure. Yeah, let's um, have a look at it. Um, so yeah, I mean the, the the key thing is, as as you know, with the original code, we were effectively talking through the Capybara interface to manipulate to manipulate cookies on the the kind of headless browser that 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 um, Capybara that, that Capybara is talking through. And like like you said before, I mean there's so many moving parts. I mean it is kind of insane, really. No, no, that's that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. I, but, but but no, I mean, I I think you know, for for myself, it's like I've spent a long time getting the parts in my head. But I think that they're they're, and I'm also seeing lots of people work, work through them. And I, I think it's a kind of a complicated stack to hold all of the elements in 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 one's in one's head. Um, it, it's a it's a complicated stack indeed. Yeah. yeah. Indeed. But but so um, I mean, in principle, what the uh, well. I mean, the key thing, and, and just stop me if this is um, 
you know, like the the the, the key reason for this is that we that Capybara Bar might be using different drivers, and we've got ex example of four of them here, and yeah. for whatever reason, the w mechanism for setting the cookies is slightly different in each. Like the the, the discussions that I've seen on the Capybara mailing list and it, GitHub issues relate to kind of saying, look, this is not a it, it's not a public part of the API, right? They kind of, I think Capybara, maybe they don't really approve of us manipulating the cookies like this, um, or at least it's not like a sort of a first-class citizen. And so it ends up being, it's up to the, the driver to implement it, and um, they will, they've done it, you know, slightly differently for different, for different things. Um, and the promise of this gem is that they've kind of, right, they, they've got... And they've made you know they've they've made it extendable by with creating an adapter class. So the kind of the refactoring that we, I see. We, I yeah. Okay. So I mean the, the the like the process of refactoring here and pulling it out like and we pulled it out into helpers.rb or whatever that probably reflects the original evolution of that uh, of of this gem, right? They probably started with a you know cruddy thing like this. And they said, "Oh, you know." And they and as as they made it extendable, effectively these pieces of code, which are specific to the individual drivers, ended up in the gem. And I imagine that the gem itself is not necessarily that complicated. Um, yeah, you can see they've got a number of adaptive. They've got a few more than us. Um, and then if we have a look inside it, in here, they've got different adapters. So there's a Poltergeist adapter, right? And so, yeah, so, so you can kind of see here, like, the driver set cookie name value options there. Like, that will correspond to, what was this? This was a poltergeist. Poltergeist, yeah, corresponds to this. It does. It does. Yeah. So, um, I mean, and it's an interesting thing. Like, like we, we could kind of make our own framework that, you know, that, that's a reasonable Learning experience to, to to do that. I mean, you you were learning about procs and uh, different things, and and that kind of refactoring of, of a thing is valuable in and of itself. And we could create a competing gem. Um, you know, well, I it, thought it, that the, the procs were an improvement over the crappy case statement. Yes, know. yes. Um, well, the interesting thing is to look at in the in the gem what they've done to kind of. So if we've got now that's version. Um, if we go back down to there. So they've got a process that, that register your own adapter, register the adapter. They're defining these classes. And so what, they, what they've done is that, yeah, right. So what they've done, I mean, the, the prox is kind of a middle road that we've gone with there. They've gone the whole hog, whole hog. And actually, if I, if I do here, if I just do, I can do bundle uh, here to make sure that I've got that gem locally. Um, and what I could do is maybe open the gem locally in, um, if I now do bundle open, what's it? It's called. Show me the cookies. That's what I did. I I kind of grabbed the gem by itself. Oh, you look, you looked at the source already, like this, yeah. Yeah, but um, I, I still could not run. I just wanted to run some tests and say, okay, show me some results. <laughs> sure, sure. Okay. Yes, yes. Well, I mean, I I guess I was just looking onto here. So what they've done is they they they've gone with classes. And then they've stored the driver itself as state. Uh, and the difference for what we did with the prox is that we just passed the driver in, um, and we end up not storing any state, which is actually functional programming. And and that's you know. The, um, so there was a refactoring that um, we've got. Can we go back to that statement that you just made? Go back to the module. Uh, you mean just look at this one here? Yes. Yep. So. They are using a module, but they're using classes, right? Yeah, so this is just creating a namespace so they can yes. refer to yes. German cookies poltergeist. But the, the, it, they're it, using the class, and then they are using the initialized method, right? Right. So the key and difference is uh, instance variables? Yes. OK. To set the state, right? Right. And that's the key difference between having a proc and a class, is that the, the, a proc defines effectively like a little standalone method. Like just this, right? Whereas the class defines a collection of methods and a also collection of methods, yes, and, and also state. Um, and 
it, it you know, uh, the, I mean, the object-oriented thing is all about let's have objects with state, and functional prog programming is all about saying let's not store that state because that's like gets tricky. Uh, in answer to Michael's question there about the uh, procs is based upon I was just sort of talking about how one in principle might refactor the case statement without going to um, complete uh, classes uh, or objects is we could have yeah, I see. Uh, uh, I see. you see it yeah I got all these line notes are in the way but basically it defines procs that would pull the elements of the case case statement out yeah I uh, got you. Which is a, a lighter weight version of, of this, but then so, given our understanding of all those things, it comes down to the, the the challenge that you were experiencing, Marcelo, was in just trying to get the gem to work, and yes. you wanted to run some tests on the gem. The thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was that was causing trouble for you there was so. If we go like, I mean, in principle, we can use the gem without understanding how it works. I just wanted to run the gem, for instance, to tell me the name of the cookie. Right, right. And I'll so, put the name of the cookie. Okay, that it, that was was on the site. Yes, if there was one. So right. Go on, Michael. I mean, your proc is basically like a command pattern. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and Marcelo. So, I mean, if I was approaching. This this gem is I would look looking down here is I would yeah, try and set up the configuration and then you know I might go for trying to make one of these features and see if it worked. So presumably you you had a go at that and you got snark on something. Is that is that right? Um, I did get some, but I I I didn't quite understand what what was what was happening. Oh, so you've got here uh, like I run that given a um, site member when I check remember me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I put some pseudo, well, not pseudo code, but some code in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, which 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 we've got here. So we could just run that and and have a look at the output and and maybe uh, think about why that was. So here we've got a scenario which is in map feature. So presumably, I can do b e cucumber here, uh, the map feature, and we can have a quick. The features, the map features on the home page, map feature yes. there. So yeah. right, so you've got the scenario there, um, and that's on line 93. So let's hit that. And um, that's running away in the background. We've got I am a site member. So this is, OK, actually under the hood, it's logging in as the admin. Um, right, and then that passes. OK. And so you got that passing, but I guess you were feeling unsatisfied about... Right, because then the rest of the step definitions were not, you know, returning anything. Go back to the... See? Ah, uh, here. Right. Yeah, yeah. I said, OK, so then yeah. show me the cookies or right. show me the cookie name or whatever. Mm -hmm. So and I guess so we've got here these, this, the show me the cookie. Well, let me go to that. I can't find it. Can go to... Uh, but so, yeah, so this thing we've got here, show me, so put the string summary of all of our cookies. Yeah. Um, and so I think that the problem there, if we have a look, is it maybe that there are no cookies set at the time? At that time? Let's have a look, another look here at the, um, computer's going to slow down, but, um, but so here, um, oh, we may be not using that one. I mean, this show me the cookies is going Remember the to... Remember the capture that I sent you yesterday? Yes, I saw that. So I thought I was getting that. So I thought, well, he it should must... return some of those. Right. I, I think that the key issue here is that this show me the cookies method call here is returning a string, but these cucumber um, steps will not then do anything with the output. Um, oh. Oh. I think is I think is quite possibly the problem. So so here let's let's have a look at what have we got. Um, and then maybe I'm not even calling them. But so we've got here we've got given I am a site member and then I check remember me cookie policy. Okay, so there we go. Uh, so what we might say is like 
this checking the maybe to remember me or is it whatever it is the I don't know if that's the where are you looking for? Well, I was just thinking about where in the sequence it would actually have set some cookies for us, but that, that's kind of irrelevant. Uh, the the critical thing there is if we then do um, and show me the cookies like so. I think we have to um, kind of uh, explicitly put them. We will see if this now shows us anything. Let's let's see. Um, there you go. Wow. So it's actually dumped rather a lot of stuff, uh, rather more than I was expecting. Um, so it's got the cookies, and then also it's also put like the whole cucumber report itself on the end. Um, but so this is we can see the cookies. What did you use the exclamation point and and show me the cookies? I only used that. Because it's there in the step definition. Oh, okay. So yeah. I, I just because in RubyMine, it um it does kind of command completion. I'm just I saw it. I saw it. Yeah, saw it. I'm yeah. gonna quit RubyMine just because it's being a bit slow at the moment. Uh, and I have a feeling that. Uh, but so the whole computer is being a bit nuts. But uh, so you, I think okay. So, I think I use and show me the cookies in the feature, but I didn't put puts. I yeah, think. yeah. I think that's. I think. I mean, that's that's the superficial issue. That I mean, the feature that I was running there didn't happen to have show me the cookies as a um, as an element in it, um, which is obviously problematic. Uh, okay. But I imagine that you you had had that at one point. I'm just going to close okay. some other. Let's go here. I want to close Let's others there. The name. Here we go. Right, and go in here. Yeah. So I mean, that's. Uh, I mean, it's one of those those things. Like the Ruby methods will always return their um, the the last last statement. So last like, statement. Yes. Yeah. Like as 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 you well know, um, yes. and. The step definitions are extremely similar to, uh, to to Ruby methods, and I often say to people who are kind of like intimidated by Cucumber or what have you, like it's just you know th this we are just calling. This is just another way of it's, it's allowing us to write method requests in English, which is kind of a nice nice thing to do. Nice, yes, nice yes. thing to do. It's a perfectly reasonable way to think about it. And then when you've when you're looking at this. This is basically your method. De the, the line here is this is your method right. declaration. So you've got right. this is this is the what the method name, and this is the method arguments. So you yeah. know, but so the but the, the key difference is that this it's just going to execute the code, and it's not going to send anything back. Okay. So you know, um, in this case, if we if we do just want to get it to print something out, then we throw puts in there, or we can have a logging statement, or what have you. It's okay. Well, cucumber itself does a little more, but yeah. Um, yes. What are you What are you thinking of in particular, Michael? I mean, the steps file is not valid Ruby per se. Uh, I think it is actually. That is. I think. So, yeah, it is. Right. I was right. Thinking. And I think that's often. I mean, it, 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 it's it's funny because often when people see it, they wouldn't actually think it was. Um, the framework but so, itself is supplying that given and and all that, right? Exactly. So th this is the funny thing, and I, I've done this a lot in boot camps and things, and I've said, like, what... I mean, it, you know, the way that it supports it is more complicated, but it's the equivalent of having, you know, you've got then, um, like this, and then you've got effectively a regex, and you've got your and block, like this. And so you've got a you know the the way that cucumber makes it possible to to make to, to sort of make this step definition come to life is by different different methods yeah. the first argument yeah. and then we'll take a block as the second argument right. and so yeah I, I know you know there's something like Michael I'm sort of uh, and so what that then does is assuming that you have some I mean it's not global but assuming that there's some 
um, what it's also doing is it's uh, it's switching its behavior based on the argument. Right. Whether it's a regex or and a it can do. Because those same methods are called. Uh, yeah. So the, the actual feature file, let's go back to that just to look at it. Mm -hmm. That's not valid Ruby. That's, it's not valid Ruby, no. So this is Gherkin. This is a valid Gherkin. Right. There's, there's a DSL there. Exactly. So it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, and, and, and it's then, well, it's interesting because some people would say that the, um, R, uh, and do say that RSpec and, in principle, like the step definition file, that they're a DSL. Um, th and th this is arguably well, a different line. DSL is an external DSL. Right. Indeed. A good, good way of summarizing it. Yes. Um, right. But so, so the interesting... Call, oh, go on. They call an internal DSL, a lot of people call it a fluent interface now. So, Sam... A fluent, you're right. Mm -hmm. Go on, Marcelo. What would be, if we were to write a quick feature um, uh, between lines 92 and 100, what could we test in that feature? Because what I put in there is just some, you know, whatever. We just wanted to uh, put some code in there, but so how would you go about giving I'm a site member when I check uh, uh, mm -hmm. what is the relationship between remember me and cookie policy for instance? Well, I don't know that there is necessarily such a strong relationship between remember me and cookie policy in as much as I think when I, I don't know that remember me necessarily sets any new cookie it might update the cookie but I mean if we if we if we run uh, local support locally uh, which we can do now why not um, so when I sent you the capture last night, I yeah. run uh, local support locally, and mm -hmm. I said I said um, I I approve I I, I guess I approve the poli the cookie policy so that mm -hmm. is true, and then the capture showed um, I don't mm -hmm. know three three cookies or something like that. Yeah yeah yeah. So we we can look at exactly the same thing. And work this out. Um, give me a second while that just loads. Um, yeah. And so, yeah. If By we the have way, a, I'm using from. Uh, yeah, yeah, me too. Uh, so we'll just get rid of that view there. Come back and be big. Yes, there we go. So then uh, we've got sources. Is that going to load a thing? Uh, I found it in uh, application. Yeah. Uh, so we, the assets. No, it's not resources. Uh, application. Ah, uh, there's. There used to be separate storage, but I mean that's changed now. Okay, the storage session storage. Come on. There were seven yeah. cookies. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, it's actually got cookies. There you yeah. Go. Yes. Yeah. So we've got. There. There is these different things. So we've got this one. The local, like Rails, just running Rails will set a session automatically. Right, right, uh, and there depending is a upon what, what is it? Is it the difference between the session and the and the cookie? I'm confused because I thought that a session needs a cookie, right? Well, they're related. So the basically what we have is that the cookie is data that is stored in the browser. So when we have an HTTP request, the server can say to the browser, "Set this cookie." So right. what we're seeing here these four cookies, we're seeing these, basically the, the server, the, I mean, whether it's the Rails server or another server, that as a process of loading this site, for the HTTP requests going backwards and forwards, 
um, we have, you know, th there have been four HTTP responses that have said, oh, and please set this cookie. Um, you know, or, or, or they have done in the past on this same, uh, you know, uh, value and they haven't expired yet. Uh, so the, the session refers to the memory about that cookie on the on the server, right? And so there's, like, the concept of the session in Rails, that's like, okay, um, if there are things that we want to remember about a user, right, that are kind of logged in, then we can associate them with the session. So the, the value here, right, is, is a hash. Depending upon the way Rails is set up, it may, in, you can store information, when you say in Rails, I'm going to store information in the session, right? It, yes. if, you're, if you're using a sort of a cookie-only based session, then it will actually encode that information and it will store it inside this, you know, the value of the cookie. Right, and when the user says that they want their um, preference changed, um, then then um, when the when the when the user wants their you know they say like oh I'm gonna want this preference changed, um, then the that request will go through to the from the interface from the through the client to the server, and the Rails server will then say oh right okay uh, we're storing this information about the user that, that, you know, this flag is on or off or what have you. Right, let's store that information like in a, in a little string and then we'll encode it and we'll send it back to the, to the client, right? And, and so this, basically the Rails server can imprint through the process of ongoing HTTP requests, can update this value here. Okay. And so, so like, basically it's the Rails server extending its memory out to saying like, okay, it's saying to the browser, Okay, the user previously asked for this, you know, that they expressed this preference. Correct. You, you to the browser, you remember it. When he or she next time sends the request, we'll get that back. We'll be able to decode it and work out what they wanted. Now, that's one. So it's a little bit dangerous because there's a hard 4K limit on what can be stored in the in the in the cookie, right? Um, and so there are various settings like you can have database-based sessions. So it just stores a key, and that actually may be how this set up. That this is just being used as a unique key, and okay. all of the information about the user preferences is just going to be stored in the database or in a uh, a cache like Redis or something, or in a flat file for 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 um, Rails. I mean, there's different options depending on the scalability. And so this is just a key, like what's stored in the cookie, which is cookie means something that is stored in the browser, is just going to be a key that allows the Rails server or any server, the next time there is a request from the same browser um, to, to look up what certain specific preferences there were for this user, like what was the last page that they looked at and so on Correct. and so forth. Correct. That is, that is super clear. And, and then if you go down, mm -hmm. what, what are the, the other, well, the second also is a session. Well, so this one, so, I mean, what this probably means is I've run... Uh, so you run website one, probably. I've run website one locally. It's probably yeah. ignoring the port. So localhost, this is a session that's been... Now, interestingly, here, as a result of it being on localhost, it means that when I'm loading this here, this website one session is also going to be sent back from the uh, client to the... To, to, I mean, actually, the interesting thing there, well, I don't know if you're that interested, but we can kind of potentially see in here... Is even worth looking at? I just read the page. Um, but if we look at the localhost uh, request in there... Like so, we can see in the request headers, you can see, look, I mean, cookies sound like this complicated thing, but basically, look, when the request was sent to localhost, basically, there was this string of text was sent. I mean, HTTP is just a text protocol, and you can see here the response was saying, yeah, okay, right, now, the set cookie, this is what came back from the Rails server, you should now set the local support session to be equal to this. Yes. To the extent that yes. we're talking to the local support app, it's not going to have from, from Rails. It's not going. It, it could try and interfere with other sessions. I mean, that was sort of hacking things yes. up, but it, it, it's yes. not supposed to do that. Um, but so, effectively, for our purposes, we can ignore this one. Um, we've got this one, and I suspect that's from Google. Um, so that's a Google setting some value for their thing because we're loading the Google Map, and that does those things. And then finally, here we've got cookie okay. policy accepted true which corresponds to, and I don't see it on this page because I've, um, I'd have to log in again, but that's, you know, we have this thing in the UK where you're supposed to pop up a little sign to say, 
We use cookies on our side. Do you accept it? And so, and actually, it was Thomas who Ockman who originally implemented that. And so, this was he implemented it by specifically setting a uh, cookie here, where instead of it, you know, being indexed as part of the session, it's just a, a very specific separate cookie that's cookie policy accepted true. If I were to choose not to accept the cookie policy. Mm -hmm. How I would have to change the preferences in my in in my browser? Uh, no. But so, for example, I can delete that cookie policy, which basically now what I've done it's is going to come up I've, when you relaunch. Right. And uh, what I've done there is I've effectively played with the brain of my my um, browser, and my browser has now forgotten the request from the local support server to set that. So if I now reload the page. What we'd expect them is we see the cookie policy. And so, uh, again, if we go and look at the cookies, so there's nothing in there. Now, this, when I, if we uh, go and look at the uh, network, and if we just clear that network for a moment, if I then click the close button, so you can see that's going to, from there, it's going to hit the endpoint cookies slash allow. There's going to be a request to allow there. Um, and, and, then, and then it redirects, so we kind of actually lose seeing that but you saw before there was a set cookie and cookie went backwards and forwards that that will happen again and so now that we've hit that endpoint of cookies allow and then been redirected to the page that we were on um, we will now see that the cookie has been reset okay yeah I play with that and and I get that result yeah And so, I mean, you're doing a feature there, which is related to kind of like the Remember Me button here for login. And yeah, that, that's what it yeah. was. In, but I noticed that in the browser, uh, Remember Me doesn't do anything in, in local support. No. Well, I, and I think, you see, if we look here at the cookies, well, we've got a Remember User token there. Oh, okay. So I think that's probably being set by device. Oh, so we manage all of our login through device. I see. I didn't see that. Okay. Okay. All right. So going back to the test. Mhm. Mm so. I mean, in this context, I mean, what what the um, I mean, we're in the context of a test. It depends what kind of, what test are we writing. Um, I mean, the, the the gem gives us a you know range of abilities of you know seeing the contents of cookies, deleting them, expiring them, creating them. The the key thing that this that you know we would be interested in. For, for this gem, is it going to help us do what we were doing? Is that, um, I don't know if I've now lost it now, if I go back to yeah, uh, yeah. You know, the, the case statement, is that we were writing our own code to set cookies. Correct. So, Correct. so what, what we're interested in is, can we create a cookie? Within that um, API, that, right? Right, right, that's defined by here. And as a result, not have to click on that, you know, allow use of cookies thing. I mean, that, that's the main reason for having that, is that because that there's that thing, basically, if we don't have that allow cookies set, then every other test, every other acceptance test throughout the, all the cucumbers, they all have to kind of start with a background step of saying, given that I've clicked this button, you know, yes. and that slows down our entire test suite. Um, and actually, we can then see uh, I mean, I, I could be writing the code there, but that's what Maroen has actually done for us in um, that he pushed on top of your <coughs> pushed on here. At uh, what he did. Yeah. So if we look at what he did, and so he's um, what he's then done here is so you, and you can particularly see the thing. So we had um, this is the the original code with our 
handcrafted, you know, case statement for dealing with each of the different drivers, right? And so we wanted basically to have a, you know, the user, a background step for pretty much every feature that cookies are approved, apart from obviously the one where we're checking that the cookie approval thing works. Um, and so what he's done here is he said, well, we don't need the custom code anymore. And he's replaced the step of cookies are approved with the API call for the show me the cookies here, which is saying create cookie, cookie policy accepted, true. And so if show me the cookies works and the AP works as advertised, then, you know, effectively we've just pulled out this smelly code. Um, it will all be, you know, handled appropriately based on what driver we're using. And then, you know, if the tests will pass, that means it's still doing the right thing. And the tests are passing, yeah. Uh, yes, indeed. We can see um, from here that it's all green. So it would seem that what what he's done is um, appropriate there. Like, the cookies worked as advertised. I mean, he's slightly concerned about uh, the setup that we have for the, the features in this environment, uh, which is something that we probably need to review. I don't, I don't have that locally, I guess. Um, I mean, he's... But, you know, we've got a custom driver that we're using called PG Billy, um, Puffing Billy, um, if I, I guess if I, I now that was the really that we rolled out when we were working on the um, and sandboxing the uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the environment. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I'm just gonna let me go to here and get the latest code locally. Uh, so yeah, if we come. So, so yeah, Puffing Billy, so we've got these two sandboxing tools, one being VCR, uh, which basically sandboxes all of the network requests that, we could, that, that our um, feature tests might generate. And so we can see associated with, you know, the map thing, we yeah. get all of these HTTP reactions, and that basically means that our tests run, you know, as, as you know. Um, right. Right. And then we also have the request cache, and this is all of the um, Billy things, yeah, because you, you, you're involved in putting this in. But so the thing, if we look at now, and this was the thing that I ultimately, because when we had a lot of trouble getting that in, ultimately getting this to work um, is to get Puffing Billy to work with Capybara and the, and the particular driver, is that rather than using uh, the Puffing Billy driver, what I do here is I, I create our own driver called PG Billy which is basically Poltergeist that will work with Puffing Billy. And so we actually just, we set the, the, the Billy proxy so that the, uh, when, the, when the headless browser is running, it will talk through that proxy and will create a sandbox for our um, you know, uh, headless browser so that all the network requests that are generated by the different the JavaScript things get sandboxed as well. And so what we can see that Marilyn has added here is he's, like, this is a kind of a custom driver, which... Yes, yes. Shows it's, he's it's very clear in the, uh, in the gem that if you want a custom, uh, a custom driver, that's yeah. the code to do Right, it. right. Yes, yeah. And so he's just hooked it up so that the PG Billy that we use um, in our Billy things defaults to the Poltergeist driver, which it's using... Uh, uh, yeah, it's you, you, we can see here, we're, we're using Poltergeist, we're just passing it a few different options. Um, and so that all works. Um, so basically, um, this was what was not clear to me, um, with the code that Marwin, um added, mm -hmm. so basically we can uh, actually... Is that enough for our purposes, or...? It, well, in principle, yes. That's, okay. I mean, and, and I, I think what it's, it's, it's a really nice inter illustration of, you know, not reinventing the wheel. Right. Is that... Because, yeah. It's, 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 it's just one line of code against 20. I mean, it's... Right. 
Yeah, and and that's so, so that you know what we've got is you know the, the, this was co the, the general approach here was something that I took you know like two or three years no a year or two ago from a Stack Overflow post was saying you know okay there's this thing and you can do it sort of like this and fact, I wasn't aware. In fact, Sam, I found the same Stack Overflow right. article and right. I said, well, that's that's where the the code is. That's exactly where that that comes from. That's right, and and it's a perfectly reasonable first pass. Um, it is. And but then our, our, our kind of uh, code sense tells us, you know, that case yeah. statements are kind of a smell. Case statements right? are, are bad. Uh, you know, I mean, th you know, if you've got to get something working and you're focused on another another big thing, and that was where I was at the time. Okay, we'll have the case statement. I mean, it was. I think it was in fact it was part of that puffing Billy, getting that all working, that this came in, and it was at that point that I created the ticket to say, you know, this is kind of. Uh, uh, you know, a, a nasty, smelly thing that we should come back to, uh, and which you did. And you know, we we started talking about how we could refactor it ourselves. And then the interesting thing is actually someone else has already done that in a in a in a gem, and yeah. you know, we can kind of. And so it, it, it's then you know we might look at the gem and look at the gem code and say, well, you know, I don't like the way the gem's designed, or it's got some shortcomings. And then we would roll our own. In this case, because the gem seems to do pretty much what we want. There's not a strong argument for us continuing down that path of refactoring this into into something something else, right? Indeed, indeed, indeed. Um, I will just simply uh, look at some of more more of the API uh, mm. code for the gem, but I think that uh, what what uh, Marwin did is just is good enough for our purpose. So. De definitely. I mean, it, it, it reduces the amount of code in our code base, uh, and it means that we kind of... I mean, there's, 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 it's always a double-edged sword, because, you know, maybe the, uh, the Show Me the Cookies gem will, you know, not be maintained and so on. But because it's open source, if we need a change to it, we can always, you know, but fork it. We can always go back to the prox or... But that's right. Well, and even we, what we can, what's particularly encouraging about the show me the cookie thing is it's already set up to allow it, it to be extended. So, and it's a fairly small gem, and it, you know, we probably be, we would be able to, you know, maintain, you know, take over the maintenance of it if someone else didn't, it, you know, it seems reasonably well designed. So, so yeah, it, it's sort of from the purpose of like cleaning up our code base, it seems like a perfectly reasonable step to perfect, do that then perfect. and, I mean, and mo move on to try and look for other things that, that are going to... I mean, th this is... this is Our client's not going to notice the difference, right? Um, in, this doesn't change the functionality of the site. Right. This is about making our test suite slightly less smelly, but that is then to our advantage, right. you know, maintaining it going forward, and uh, hopefully that will allow us to ultimately deliver them more features and faster. Will that... Well, that could also set the uh, so the the cookies will be uh, taken care of globally, meaning throughout the application, right? Uh, well, that is it will not break I mean, other code. Uh, what I'm saying is, it will not break mm -hmm. other tests. No, it, it doesn't appear to. I mean, and if we look at it, I mean, the only thing that we no, were no, doing no, no, Marwin ran it and, and it was green. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly, and and indeed, I mean, our original code was just setting cookie headers. The the gem does the same thing. Um, th there's no reason to think, particularly if the tests are all green, that I mean, like I, I, as we saw, you know, when we looked at, I think we should look at the poltergeist one. You know, we saw that this code that we have here is exactly matched by the code that we see um, in, the, in the in the driver itself. Indeed, uh, yeah. which Indeed. is which is here, Indeed. yeah. Um, uh, you know, w and actually done slightly more flexibly and with other functionality. So, you know, we've also in by pulling in the gem, we've now got access to all of the other functionality that the the, the, the thing provides. And um, yeah, I mean, cookies are a fairly standardized, got an old piece of technology. So n n it seems like no surprises so far. Uh, mm -hmm. And and if it runs on CI, then I'm very happy. All right. So, um, as far as the uh, he submitted a PR for that already. Well, he pushed um, the. Oh no, he, he pushed, pushed it to me. Yeah, he put he pushed it to you. So, I mean, basically, the thing to do now uh, would be for for you to review 
the, 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 the PR and, and his changes, I mean, there are things like, is that like an extra line there? No, it's not. Uh, I, I wanna, mean, I want to start cleaning up my uh, my code mm. too, because yeah, I, I get that hound dog or whatever it is that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Yes. I mean, some of it, uh, it's looking not too bad. But yeah. So the thing to do now would be to review all of the changes there, remove any changes that are unnecessary. You know, just um, just clean up and make sure that you're happy. Like, I mean, things here, I, I would put like an extra space between these two methods, or you know, what what have you. But but the thing now is for you to get comfortable with the pull request, and then potentially it, you let me know when it's ready to be reviewed again, and um, we can get that merged in. Okay, all right, good enough, good enough. Cool, fantastic, fantastic. Great stuff. Yes. So, uh, so do you do you need to go to work now? I need to go to work. Yes. But um, I'm planning on doing this if we could at least once a week. Sure. Well, let's let's yeah. I mean, that, that's I think that's been very helpful. Let's uh, let's because chat. In, the in things that I get now. from you in one hour, mm. it, it's very good, Sam. Very good. Oh well, I, I'm very pleased to hear that. Um, I've um, yes, yes. Well, let, let, uh, in principle, that 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 could work very well. Yeah. Let, let's um, let's let's talk more on Slack, and uh, we'll we'll sort it out. Yeah. All right, man. Nice one. Uh, Great to catch up with you. Um, how, is, uh, how is the family? They, they are very they're full of beans, and uh, the boys are all insane about playing football or soccer, as you would call it. Um, that's their big thing. They all want to play in the Premier League and, and stuff. And no kidding. Crazy pipe dream. But, uh, they want to yeah, play. I mean, like, are they playing professionally? or? No, no. I mean, they, 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 my children are like 7, 7, and 11. But they're just, they, they play in the, the, the weekend league. You know, okay. uh, it's um, and I'm I'm actually the, the under eight's coach for the two oh, okay. um, right. the two twins. Um, but so the, the, in in an hour, I'll be taking them all off to um, a soccer academy. There's a for midweek midweek. So it's all for them. It's all about um, football. But they're, yeah, they're um, full of beans. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm just I feel good about. But my wife says like, well, you should be teaching them how to you know program. And I'm like. Yeah, they'll probably spend the rest of their lives looking at the computer. I would like them to be outside <laughs> running around running around running around in the sun while they while the chance still avails itself. So um Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Good stuff. So I, I think tell them the, uh, the the talent to make it to uh, the Premier League? I would be very surprised. I would be very surprised. But I, I feel it's very important, given that they've expressed that desire to me, I feel it's very important to sort of enable them to follow exactly. that dream and exactly. And see how far they can get. So, um, you know, my eldest did re request. He said, you know, before he goes to high school, he wanted to start doing like an academy thing. And I, he went and did a trial for this academy, uh, which accepted him. And he's now doing this once a week academy thing. And kids there do do get signed to to you know the academies of Arsenal and Chelsea and the other Premier League clubs. What is the what is the team that they are or what is the they team? Uh, well, my eldest and the, another the young lady, they seem to like Manchester United, which I, I feel is a bit ridiculous because they're, I mean, we live in London. And it's, but yeah, uh, you live in London. How come you're but, in Manchester United? Well, it's this, it's this thing. It's like, you know, the, the Manchester United, it's kind of the highest profile team. And I think, you know, they're, they're fickle youngsters who are That's attracted it. to the high profile well, team. You have, like, um, you have like four teams in, in, in London, right? We have, we have a lot of teams. I mean, the closest teams to us are like Arsenal and Watford and Queen Park Rangers and Chelsea and, and yeah, so on. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah. there's not, we live in Harrow. There's not like a specific team, like a Premier League or even a, a High League team, like associated with our immediate area. But I, I think, um, you know, as a kids, uh, they're just attracted to bright and shiny. Um, but there we in go. In fact, you're near Wembley, right? We do live near Wembley, actually. Yes, yes, we we are yeah. within. Uh, yeah, I mean, we sometimes I do I do training. There's a there's a five aside next to Wembley. We sometimes do training. Yeah, yeah. with the boys there. Yeah, yeah. So it's a, and 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 you're well. Uh, uh, things are good. Good. good yeah, yes. Yeah. Things are are well here in in California. Yes, yes, yes. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. Learn, yes. I, I want to learn more. Uh, I still like coding. <laughs> Let me tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, just out of interest, are, are you in Los Angeles, San Francisco? Whereabouts in California are you? San Francisco. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, I'm so. I'm well, I'm so. The, I live in the city. Oh wow! Oh, I'm so envious of your location. I love San Francisco. I'm just yeah, and it's I live obviously by the uh, near the Golden Gate Bridge. Wow, yeah. that's um. I, I, well, I'll, we'll have to hook up if I can get out that way sometime. You you certainly do, man. You certainly do. Good, Good More stuff. than welcome. 
Excellent. All right, Sam. Excellent. I gotta run. Good session, Marcelo. Okay, yeah, uh, I'm going to have a break myself. Are, are you uh, recording but, this, right? I, I did record this, yeah. I'm just going to shut down the broadcast now. No, 